Hey you everybody, how are you all doing today? And welcome to a quick little guide on how to do some of the most useful and important monster tricks. Now, to start, in the bottom right of the screen you'll see my controller overlay, which is going to light up as I press certain buttons, which is going to allow you to see exactly the inputs that I make as I make them. So, hopefully that's going to be useful. A couple things that are good to know before we start. First of all, pre-winding. If you hold jump, if you hold down the jump button as you approach a jump, and then also hold down the direction on the D-pad that you want to spin, your character will kind of gear up and prepare for the jump. And this means that when you eventually do let go, that they will actually spin faster than they would have otherwise. So this makes monster tricks a lot faster. Also, uh, when you do your flips and spins in the air, you actually want to tap them. So if you combine pre-wind and tapping, you will get some really fast spins and flips in the air. As you can see, if you do a pre-wind first and then transition into tapping, and I'd say tap roughly between three and five times a second, you can see basically what I'm doing on the controller overlay right now. So. This is something that you'll want to combine with monster tricks in order to make it more efficient. Now, let's get into the actual tricks themselves. Okay, so let's start off with the Stone Age, which is the trick with the most utility in the game, because it's very fast and also gives a fair amount of points. Now, the best way to do Stone Ages is to load up your pre-wine with the two directions that you'll want to go, because the Stone Age consists of two backflips and one spin to the side. So, if you look at how your character is facing, you will want to do two backflips plus a spin towards their front, so you'll want to spin the direction they're facing. So right now you see she's facing left, so I want to combine two backflips with a spin facing to the left. Now, if you combine pre-wind and tapping with that, then you'll be able to do a Stone Age. So, as you can see, there aren't that many inputs to this one. This one should be relatively easy to learn. It might take a while to get consistent, because it's kind of difficult to do in the heat of the moment. But if you're looking to learn monster tricks in order to get more points, this is a really good place to start, because this monster trick is very fast, so you can do it pretty much anywhere, and it's still going to get you a lot of points. Next up is the Executioner, which is the big bad trick of them all. This is the longest trick out of the ones we'll be covering today, and consists of a triple backflip and a frontside 180, which means that you do three backflips and you combine it with one spin, where you spin towards their back. So, as you can see, currently her back is facing to the left, so you combine three backflips with a spin to the left, and there it goes, there's your Executioner. This one is really important to learn the tapping for, because if you don't tap this one correctly, you might kind of stall in the middle of it like that. That's a common problem with the Executioner. So, my top tip is to basically tap two times really quickly shortly after you start, and then wait about half a second, and then do another two quick fire taps. That should allow you to get the Executioner most of the time. This one's Similarly to the Stone Age, if you're looking to get better at freestyle, this one's really important to learn. Because this one's kind of the one you use when you have a lot of airtime that you can pad out for max points. Whereas the Stone Age is more for tighter spots where time is of the essence. Alright, next up it is time for kind of the backup trick. This one's the Alpine Star, and it's very handy for when you don't have enough time to do an Executioner but you would have normally done a Stone Age. However, if you did a Stone Age, you wouldn't be able to validate it by doing a quick 180 after the trick like that. So if you don't have time for that, then fitting in an Alpine Star is definitely to be recommended. An Alpine Star is a double backflip and a front side 540, which means that you do two, two backflips combined with a 540 sideways spin towards your back, so the direction your character is facing, or sorry, the direction your character's back is facing, that's where you want to spin, so 
Like with the last ones, as you can see, her back is currently facing to the left. So you do a double back flip and a 540 spin to the left in that case. Now, the Alpine Star may take a little bit to learn. And what I've found is that kind of pressing both directions, you want to go at the same time, but then not tapping the sideways direction all the way through is generally a good way to get this consistently. Also, um, when you do an Alpine Star, if you get 7,600 points from it, roughly, that tends to mean that the Alpine Star was a success. So that's also something to look out for. If you're about to get 7,600 points, the Alpine Star was likely a success. And those are the most important monster tricks. Now, I will note that if you're just looking to use monster tricks for general use or for speed running, that you'll be fine with just the Stone Age. Just knowing the Stone Age will go a long way since it has such good utility and you can use it in a wide variety of circumstances. If you're looking to learn top level freestyle, however, I really recommend you put the time in and learn the other two as well. Executioner and Alpine Star will also come in very useful. Now, as kind of a note to end on, as you may have noticed throughout this video, I actually do the next monster trick instantly after I finish the first. Now, you're not actually supposed to be able to do that, because normally you're supposed to have to wait a little bit, like this, because you see, normally the game is going to have you wait a while before you can do your next monster trick. Now, how I do that is I use a technique called frame cancelling, which is where, as your trick animation is about to finish, if you quickly hit a double tap, really quickly, uh, on the on any shoulder button, I prefer the R1 button, but any one of them will work, then it will allow you to do the next trick pretty much right away, or at least as right away as you manage to tap it. So, this is a technique that requires some practice, but it is extremely useful in freestyle especially, and even in speedrunning it has its role. So if you're interested in learning this, I'm going to link to my friend Rithik's um, frame cancelling tutorial in the description. So, if you're interested in learning frame cancelling, definitely go check that video out. And that's pretty much it. However, you should know that there are a lot of other monster tricks in this game that you can do. There are a grand total of 35 of them, and the ones I mentioned today are simply the ones that are the most useful and the most important for speedrunning or learning freestyle or stuff like that. However, if you are indeed interested in learning some of the other ones, I will leave a link with a list of all of the monster tricks in the game in the description down below. So if you are interested, then definitely consider checking that out. It's a nice way to get just a little bit of challenge or, or just give yourself a new new perspective on the game, just enjoy playing it in a different way. However, all of that said, I hope this video has been really useful to you all. This is a video that I've wanted to make for a long time, so I really hope that it's going to help out a lot of people with learning monster tricks. So, best of luck on learning monster tricks everyone, and if you have any questions, then feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I will get back to you and try and help you out to the best of my ability. That said, that's going to do it for me, so thank you so very much for watching everyone. Have an absolutely bang up rest of your day. Take care and goodbye.